All right, welcome to Time Management Seminar, helping people get the most of their time on this earth. And uh, this might not sound like the most exciting um, seminar that you could take, but it's, it's, it really is the foundation to all the other seminars we're going to do. We're going to look at parenting. We're going to look at money management, uh, you know, setting up your household, um, all these different topics. But if you can't manage your time, if you can't stick to the goals that you set, then what's the point of learning all these other things? We live in a, a, a very noisy world. We, it, it, our world is like a fast river, and we find ourselves going down the river, and it's like we have no control, that, 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 that life is pushing us, and all of a sudden, you know, half your life is gone, and it's like, well, what happened? What happened to me? What happened to, you know, what, what God has called me to do? I, I don't even know what God has called me to do. What are my gifts? What are my abilities? What's my personality? What are, what are my opportunities? And, and if I knew those things, how do I stick to those things? How do I, how do I start living my life with uh, intention? So we're going to look at these things, but the first thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about time itself. Time is kind of a strange thing. What is time? Time is a progression of events from the past to the present into the future. So there's the past, there's the future. All we can grab hold of is the present right now. The problem is by the time we grab hold of now, it's already in the past. And we can't anticipate. All we can do is grab now and we're already right. So what is that little slice called now? What is the slice of time? How do we understand it? Well, we have no idea. We don't know what it is. All the, the greatest scientists in the world, they don't know what it is either. We do know how it's measured. Time is measured by comparing one event with another. So we have the earth going once around on its axis. And because of that, we see the sun rise in the morning. And the next day we see it again. And we have a sense of time passing from one sunrise to the next. And clever people invented this thing called a clock where they divided up that time into 24 equal sections. And we call those hours. And then we divide those into minutes and those into seconds. But all we're doing is comparing the mechanism of an invention called the clock with the spinning of the earth on its axis. When my kids were young, uh, we would go from Vancouver to Seattle to Grandma's house. And they wanted to know, well, how long is the trip? And to say it took three hours didn't make any sense to them. They didn't know, they didn't have a feel for what an hour is. So we would say, well, it's three Sesame Street episodes to Grandma's house. Because they watched Sesame Street episodes, they had a little sense, not, not a huge sense, but a sense of how long an episode took. And well, now it's three of them. So it gave them a little idea of how, you know, how long it's going to take. So we understand how time is measured. The next question is, well, where did time come from? Did God create time? Is, you know, God created the earth, the heavens and the earth. Did he create time? Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Did he at the same time create time? Well, the Bible doesn't say. Is God in time? Was there a time before God created time? Which doesn't make any sense. 2 Peter 3 verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. So what does that mean? Does, it, does that mean that God is, that God can be in the present and, and the past and the future all at the same time? Or did, is somehow, you know, God outside of time? Is God, does time work differently with God than with us? And how, and how would that make any sense? Well, we don't really know these things. Uh, 
Albert Einstein, people like us who believe in physics know that the distinction between the past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. He, he developed the theory of relativity and, you know, somehow, you know, the speed of light and somehow it bends time and I don't know. Maybe you understand that whole thing. I don't understand it. Regardless, we don't know what time is exactly, but we know that there's an eternal aspect to it. How do we think of eternal time? 2 Corinthians. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. That's true. Yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs all our problems. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. So we have this sense of temporary. Temporary things don't last long. Temporary things decay and fall apart. But we have this sense that there's more than those things that are temporary, the things that decay and fall apart. How do we think of this time? Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the heart, human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. God has put eternity in our hearts. This sense that, that life is more than what we see. That Life is more than just today, that life is more than just this week or this year or my lifetime even. That there's something beyond. And that what I do today and the things that I encounter, that these things have significance not just for now, but, but beyond the for now. I, I've met atheists that, that, are, that want to convince me that atheism is right and that I should give up Christianity. And I always go, well, why? Why do you care? Why do you go to meetings to hold on to your atheism in, in, in the face of the onslaught of Christianity? Why do you care whether people become Christians or they don't become Christians or whether you're an atheist or you're not? What difference does it make if there is no God? And, you know, we die and our, our atoms become, you know, part of the universe and... Eventually, you know, our sun burns out and the earth freezes over and human existence does, you know, it's, it, it ends as we know it. Who cares what, what I believe or what you believe? Why do you bother? Why does he bother? Because God has put e eternity in our hearts. God has put eternity in the, the human heart and we can't help but want something to go on. Even when we deny it, even when we're against it. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. So how should we live with this, you know, with this sense of eternity and purpose? Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best, more than is needed, being continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion in the Lord, is not futile or wasted. It is never without there's that word again, purpose. Our lives have purpose. So let's live our lives with purpose. Let's not be, you know, dissuaded by the things around us. Let's, let's not just go with the flow of what's happening around us. Let's figure out who we are. Let's figure out what our gifts are. Let's figure out what we're good at. Let's figure out our personality types and, and what God may be calling us towards and start living that way and discarding the things that are holding us back. Well, how much time do we have? How much time do we have to work with? Psalm 90 verse 10. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. I'm 64. I better get going. <laughs> Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Life is short. And we can't slow time down. No matter, we can't like put, a, put the brakes on. 
And you can't buy more time. It doesn't matter how powerful, how rich you are. You cannot buy more time. Some years ago, I, I was at the house of this wealthy guy with my friend, and we were talking for a while, and he said, you know, boys, I got to get going. I got to take my plane and fly it to the Caribbean. And I looked at him, and I said, wow, it must be nice to own your own plane. <laughs> and he said, without missing a beat, he said, I will trade my plane for your youth right now. You can't buy time. The, you know, the pharaohs, they built these pyramids. They, they wanted to go beyond their life, but they can't. They couldn't. I remember we were in Cairo, my wife and I. We, we went into the museum and in some back room. That, I don't know, they were renovating or something. But we found ourselves in this back room, and there was Ramses II, the great pyramid builder. He was just in this box looking straight up at us through this glass. Most powerful man in the ancient world, and yet he could not buy one more day. Peanuts. Life is going by too fast for me, says Charlie Brown. I'm not accomplishing anything. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not even learning anything. Stop the clock. Don't you ever wish you could just stop the clock? It just goes by so fast. You know, when I meet people my age, that's all we talk about. Every time we meet, ah, oh, I can't believe how fast time has gone. I can't believe it's winter. Or I can't believe it's summer. I can't believe it's another year. Time just keeps racing by. So make sure you grab hold of it. All right, I want to I wanna show you a little video clip. It's, 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 a little, it's from a movie. I think it's one that you know, is familiar with. It's great on this sense of grabbing hold of time. So here, I'm going to play it for you. I just don't know how I'm going to get to Paradise Falls. That's it. You can take us there in a blimp. Ray will take us. Cross your heart. Cross it. Cross your heart. Good. You promise. No backing out. Well, see you tomorrow, kid. Bye. Adventure is out there. You know, you don't talk very much. 
I know the first time I saw that, I bawled like a baby. I mean, it's so, so power. I, well, I watched it this morning and I bawled too. But it's so, um, in just a few minutes, it, lets you, it gives you that sense that we shouldn't be wasting our time. The time is a precious commodity and we shouldn't be wasting it. So, since our time is limited, how shall we understand the time we have? See it as a gift. This is the greatest gift that God has given you. Out of all the gifts, time is the most precious. Number two, see it as a responsibility. God has placed you on this planet for a reason. You're not just taking up space. It's not like you're on, on vacation. God looked at all the possible worlds that he could have created and he chose the one where you exist. It, we, he did that for a purpose. And number three, see your life as an opportunity. Opportunity to do things, to find things, to discover things. Find out who you are. And so instead of just being pushed along by, by life, you know, everyone's pushing you along. Instead of being pushed along decide and figure out what you want to do and, and try to live that way. So those are the kinds of things that we're going to do. Psalm 31 verse 15, my times are in your hands. Then I have these little letters here, DV. You know what they stand for? People used to, people used to write letters by hand back in the day and they would often sign their name, but they'd also put at the bottom DV. And it stands for Deo Valente. Deo means God. Valente means will. God willing. What is God's will for your life? Well, let me, uh, let me uh, finish this introduction, introductory um, thing on time management with this. If you live to be a hundred, I want to live to be a hundred minus one day. So I never have to live without you. <laughs> and when I saw that, I cried too. Let's grab hold of the time that we have. I hope you enjoy the next few sessions as well.